Our brother, Prophet, was born in uh, 1975. He was the seventh born in the family. He was baptized by the names of David Okuga Nyangweso. So Prophet was like a nickname. My mother used to say that, oh, Hey, Ochalgi professor, Ochalgi, you know, he looked like a professor because he was intelligent. And you know, his demeanor, the way he lo used to look, he looked like a professor. That's how he got the name Professor. Yes. Um, Mr. Joseph Nyangweso and the late Margaret Nyangweso loved Professor. Professor started ailing at the age of two years. So from 1977, so it, it was a very long journey, but we thank God. God was gracious to my brother, and we thank God for everything. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good, and that's his nature. He gave Prof life for 46 years. From what he suffered from, you know, and you know, the way he embraced it, he embraced it in a very good way because he never even bothered anybody about his disease. You didn't even come home and you'd not even know that Prof is unwell. Hmm? You'd be like, oh, you guys do your thing, you know. When you go wherever you're going, bring me some yama choma or whatever, you know. So, I, I, you know, he embraced what he was suffering from. Well, he didn't bring anybody down. Like in life, when people fall ill and somebody has maybe an ailment, they'll try to even make you feel guilty that you're unwell. So out of the nine children from my, our family, he's the only one who now suffered from sickle cell anemia. So, Prophet, I appreciate you for that. Okay, our brother was born. Oh, uh, Prof was uh, the youngest brother. And him and I were very close. We were very close. When we flew, I, we, I brought my dad to America. My family said, okay, Emma, bring Fadi to America. They bought our tickets and I was like, okay. We are coming to America, we were coming for a holiday and Fadi was coming for medical you know, checkup. And we were coming to see Prof. We didn't know, you know, the way you always assume, because he, he doesn't bother, he doesn't even uh, tell you that, oh, I'm sick, I'm sick. You know, he, that was not even, you know, one of his, uh, the conversations we had with him. So as we came for a holiday, and my dad was coming for medical treatment, so, you know, so it was normal. It was normal for us. So we're very close. I would spend time with him. OT would come home to see us. He would go and spend time in Prophet's room, even uh, Uhudu, you're always there. After I'm, I'm done with Prof, you'd go there and spend time with him. Remember in the bedroom? Yeah, so we didn't know it was that serious. As we were like, oh, you know, Prof is always unwell. So we're like, oh, he's gonna recover. But for the time we're here, he was in hospital. I met Kim there. Because we'd go to hospital and, you know, Kim would come to meet us, you know, smiling and, you know, saying, you know, she's taking care of Prof. And we used to appreciate that very, very much. And Prof used to talk about you guys very, very much. He really appreciated the way you guys were taking care of him. Thank you so much for that. And God bless you for that. You gave him comfort. You know, all of us here, everyone here is scared of going to hospital. Who is ready to go to hospital? When you hear you have to go to hospital, you're like, oh my God. But Prof never used to fear. Prof was like, oh, today I'm not feeling well. Then Yang would tell him, my brother Yang, would tell him, no, no, if you have a stomach problem, we can take you to hospital. I, I'll take you to hospital. And that's what Yang did for Prof all the time. Yeah, so I appreciate that. So we were very close and, you know, we talked a lot. He told me very many things, yeah. So he spent his uh, childhood in Nairobi, in Gate Estate, uh, phase one, Calibot Road, where he made many lifelong friends. You've seen the friends? 
Jimmy, Jim, Eric, and uh, Ray. Yeah, so he made many friends because people liked him. You know, he was, you know, really cool. He liked making friends. Um, Gay Estate is in Langata. For those people who have been to Kenya, Langata is in, uh, uh, Gay Estate is in Langata. So he attended Langata Primary School for his primary, and for his secondary education, he went to Highway, Highway School. He was astute. These days, people Google. You can Google what astute means, you know. He was astute, yeah. And was always open to giving people around him sound advice, and he was a therapist to many. You tell him something, he was very bold. As much as he respected OT, I, and Akina Joji, who are older than him, he would not even, you know, I, I, I think uh, what I can say is that he respected, you know, hierarchy, like in the family, you know, the way you respect your big brother, like OT, me, I've never told him, oh, I, can, this, I can tell him, okay, I don't like this, you know, but I'll, I'll just be like, oh, okay, OT, okay. So Prophe was like that, he respected that. You don't tell of OT, you don't tell of a Joji, you don't tell of Fama, you don't tell of Bob, okay, Bob, you're older than Prof, yeah? You don't tell of Bob, <laughs> you don't tell of Yang, but the rest of the people, Oh, oh, Amami, you're older also? <laughs> On a light note, yeah. You don't tell of people who are older than you. Yeah, you can just tell them in a nice way. So Profe was like that. And I like that about him. I, re I like that about him. And I, uh, I, I really love that about him. You know, sometimes when people come to America, you think you can tell of people who are older than you or, you know, Profe had that respect. Profe, that one I say, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you. So at the tender age of two, he was diagnosed with sickle cell, mm -hmm. much to our dismay and sadness, but not to Profe's. It did not, fa it did not face him. He accepted it and fought a good fight, like a champ and fought. His medical team even dubbed him as the samurai warrior. I remember when I first to see, I went to see him in hospital when I came to America. I asked Prophet, oh, who's samurai warrior? So they told me, no, 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 no. My brother Young is only explained to me that, no, no, no. They're the ones who, uh, you know, they call him samurai warrior because of the way he has fought for his life, that disease. So we have to appreciate Prof. He was a warrior. That's why we should call him a winner. Winner, a winner. He's a winner, because he fought a good fight. And he never brought any, anybody down with his disease. If you went to see him in the hospital, he tells you, oh, you guys can go. Uh, if you have something to do, you guys can go. There are some people, some of us, when you're unwell, you want to make people stay with you. You want to tell them, please sleep with here. Yeah, Prof was not like that. He was a very practical person, practical. When you have to do something, he says, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. And Young will even attest to that. He would be unwell. Young tells him, oh, no, 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 you have to go to hospital. No, he would say, oh, uh, uh, let me relax, I can go tomorrow. Young would tell him, no, I'll take you to OC. Yeah, so. You know, that's, that's, you know, that's mental strength. That's mental strength. You know, when you have mental strength and you don't have self-pity, Prophet did not have self-pity. Like, pity me. I am sick. Oh, my God. Stay with me. So I loved that about Prophet. Th then I didn't realize it until now, you know, he, he passed away. That's when I'm like, oh, my God. You know, this guy didn't have mental strength. Okay, he, had, he never had self-pity and had mental strength beyond our understanding. We all learned, leaned on him more than he leaned on us. He didn't lean on anyone. Profe was selfless with a strong mind. It's only his body that failed him. He was a fun-loving person who lived his life to the fullest and never let 
sickle cell define him. Because of his easy going nature, his loving kindness, he had a lot of friends. He was one of those people who never complained and you could always be counted on. <coughs> Our brother excelled at whatever task he took on. He had a brilliant mind and he had big dreams and it is unfortunate that his life ended so short. Mm. Prophet came to America in 2001 and worked at Wells Fargo in sales and lived a normal life. He was staying with the, my, my eldest brother Otieno then and had a lot of, oh, women admirers. <laughs> okay, women admirers as well as, you know, as well. He loved good music and he was always the designated driver when he wanted to go out in his car that he was so proud to have bought on his own through his own hard work. So can you imagine when he came, he was well. You know, he was good, yeah. So after mom passed away last October, mom rest in peace. He was heartbroken because they were very, very close with mom. <laughs> they were very close. Now this one is to take care of him. Just like Kim said, he's talked so much about Made. Made is one is to really take care of him. She would even sleep in hospital. I mean, she would like be there, like, you know, from work, she'd be there like the next day, right? Yeah, so, he was heartbroken. And unfortunately, he could not even come for Made's funeral because he was unwell, he was in hospital. Yeah, he couldn't make it. Hmm? Mother, he was at broken and mom was his rock. And now he has gone. Join her. To join and her. And our late brother. And George. our late brother, Ajudi. Until we meet Until again. Until we meet again. Yeah. Our lives feel so empty right now. We I can say the Okay. Thank you, Our lives feel so empty right now. We stay at home and we feel like any minute Prof will walk through the door. We miss his kindness, his support and humor. Prof will always be there if we need him someone to talk to or we needed someone to make you laugh. Mm. I hope someone to make... <laughs> I hope that everyone here today will take the time to think about all of the fond memories they had with Prof. He may have gone, but his memory will live on and us forever. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, peace, bro. Yeah. Rest, rest in peace, bro. Prophet. Uh, prophet. Till we meet again. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. A lot of you must be wondering why the color burgundy today. Burgundy is um, the color for sickle cell awareness. And two days after Prof passed away, President Biden signed a proclamation for on National Sickle Cell Awareness Month, declaring September as Sickle Cell Awareness Month. And this is September. So we encourage all of you to take some time and learn about sickle cell disease. 
learn about how we can support loved ones who are walking that journey and learn about how we can support some of the breakthrough initiatives in science um, from the National Institute of Health as well as um, the FDA and, and other organizations trying to create awareness but also find um, solutions or cures, if you will. So please take that time. If there's anything I would ask to, for you to leave with here today is to take some time and learn more about the disease and, and find a way to support loved ones like Prof, who, as Emma said, walked this journey very bravely and owned it and understood that he could um, walk this journey despite his family's support. So thank you, Emma. That, that was hard, but thank you so much for doing that. And thank you, Toya, for that support. I'm going to ask um, Prof's nephews and nieces, Drew Odero, who is a mommy's son, please come up as I call your names. Drew Odero, Ashanti Nyangweso, who is Young's daughter, Josie Nyangweso, who is the late George's son, Patricia Otieno, who is Otieno's daughter, and Joey Nyangweso, who is Bob's son. I wanted to mention their parents so that you can relate to who they are from the Nyangweso family. So they have Bible verses. Do you all have your Bible verses? Okay, so I can see some of you still consulting. That means you don't all have your verses. Who has their verse? Who's going to go first? I'll go first. Oh, Drew's going to go first? Okay, you can go first. Hello, everyone. I know this is a tough day today. Everything will be fine. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23, 4. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to read a verse from Romans 8, verse 28. And it says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Um, rest in peace, Uncle Prof. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to read a quick verse. Blessed are those who mourn, uh, for they shall be comforted. I know stuff's very tough now, but we got to see the positives and things and come together and celebrate this his life and, you know, learn from it and just, you know, exalt him. Thank you. Uh, first off, I want to start by thanking every single person who made time in their day today to come out and mourn and celebrate Uncle Prof's life. I have a verse from Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And Uncle Prof never had any fear. Lamentations 332. But though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you. Those are the next generation of Nyangwesas. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, we're going to try and move really fast. Um, so we're going to change the program just a little bit. I'm going to have um, the speeches. We, we will skip the song for now. We will have the song. But I'm going to have um, Amami come up. Uh, young Bob and Otieno. Let's 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 have the speeches um, 
first and then we'll, we will have the song. Um, we, we will, there are some folks who are on that program who will not be speaking today. They have agreed to speak at another time. So we'll have Amami, Young, Bob, and Otieno come up. So Amami, um, Abi is going to do the poem after they, after they speak. Okay, so that will be your, your turn. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you all so much for coming here to help pay respect to my kid brother, David Profe, Master P, Samurai Warrior, Okoga Nyangweso. Um, we are heartbroken uh, to see Prof be gone and taken away from us, and his life cut short. I don't know what I will do without him. He was my comforter, believe it or not. As much as I should have comforted him, he comforted me. Everything I'll go through, I will talk. He's like our therapist. Thank you, Profe, for being an inspiration to all of us, showing us what strength is what being strong is about, what resilience is, what being a powerful man is, what being dependable is, what being patient is. I just love him so much. And my children love him. He was a great uncle to my sons. He supported my children and me and my little family and uh, we'll miss him dearly. Rest in peace, Prof. A. I'll see you soon. Say hi to mom and a Georgie. We'll be there. Let him sleep, guys. Let him sleep in peace. He will wake up, as the pastor told us the other day. So thank you. Thanks, everyone, for being here. I love you, Prof. Good evening, everybody. I'm Yang Nyangweso. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm actually the number five in the family. And Prof was number seven. So when we grew up, he was always uh, a little shorter than me. Uh, <laughs> you know. So uh, he grew up actually tough going to hospital every once in a while. Uh, the doctors at the hospital told him he might not get to 21. And we used to wonder, like, oh, wow, 21? Our brother might pass away at 21? Not so young. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, so we, we kind of didn't think too much about it. Whenever he went to hospital and came back home, you know, he would be okay. And, you know, all I knew was, I wanted him to play number two in our soccer team. So, <laughs> so whenever he came back, I would tell him, okay, now, are you ready to go? Okay, we have the game tomorrow. And, you know, he, we would go and play soccer. And, uh, you know, we'd play soccer for hours and until mom would be calling us like, hey, you guys got to come and eat lunch. And we'd be like, we'll, we'll come. But we continued playing. Uh, so whenever he was home, he was enjoying the game so much. And uh, I, I guess he was gaining also a lot of strength when he played soccer. Uh, so with all those years, we just got used to, he would go to hospital and come back home, and uh, he would be OK. He was very strong. And when he, when he was OK, he wouldn't even complain about feeling sick or anything. He would, just, he would just talk normal, you know. He would just be like, oh, I got to take my med, uh, you know, I got to take this med and this med. And after that, he would just be fine. So you don't even talk about pain. Like Emma was saying, he was, he was never complaining that, oh, I'm feeling so bad. Or, you know, once he took his medication, he would just be okay. 
and we would just talk normal stories. We would even forget that he's, he's sick, you know? Uh, <clears throat> but he was uh, so strong spiritually that at the end we, we realized it's his body that failed him. Because until the last day he was talking with a lot of energy and spirit. Until the last minute. Uh, so all I can say is, Prof, rest in peace, samurai warrior. Uh, he's he's got, always going to live in our hearts. Thank you all so much for coming. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Bob Nyangweso. I am a prof's older brother. Uh, to me, the dem uh, demise of prof is very painful. It is uh, such deep pain, I really can't explain it. But what consoles me is uh, it is the will of God, and uh, it is uh, the direction we are all going. So it was just Prof's time. Prof has lived a, a very good life, I would say. Uh, he's been uh, in and out of hospital since he was two years old. And usually when he didn't have a crisis, Prof was, was good. He would play soccer, like Young said. He would play basketball, he would go to work. Then he would have a crisis and he'd go to the hospital. And he would go and come back. And we did it so many times that, uh, you know, some people would have found, think it was normal. Because Prof never said, I'm in so much pain or I'm sick. He would uh, initially, he would actually even, when he had uh, uh, a feeling that he was going to have a crisis, he would drive himself to the hospital and, uh, you know, check himself in. So what I know about him is he knew so much. He was well vast in, uh, with information and knowledge. And uh, actually, in the last few years, his wisdom surpassed anybody's of his age. He knew everything. He knew how to comfort. He would analyze the situation and give you a straight answer, a straight shot, not beating about the bush. Some uh, the wisdom that I really can't even understand because you'd call him with a, a situation. And the answer he gives you would perplex you. It's like the angle that you didn't even think about. And it, it, it's not even through a lot of effort. He just, he just knew it. So he was extremely wise, intelligent, and mentally strong. He's the strongest person I've, I've met uh, through what he has gone through, the pain and the struggles. And when you meet him, he's just excellent. He's just talking like anybody else. Like Young mentioned, uh, I, I, I was not here in Minnesota, but the day he went home, a, a day before he passed, he was uh, the life of the house. He's the one who was cracking the jokes, talking to dad, Emma, Otia, everybody at the family, you know, at the dinner table. So it, was, it, it came with a a great shock, but all I can say is uh, my little brother Prof, uh, rest in peace. We love you so much and we, we really, really miss you. There's a great void. Uh, your absence is greatly felt. Uh, so till we meet again, uh, rest in peace, Prof. Thank you. Again, thank you for the nurses and thank you for everybody for coming to spend some time with us. Thank you, Bob. 
I want to bring, Josie is going to stand in and speak on behalf of his father, the late George Nyangweso. So Josie, come, I'm so proud of you. He took the initiative to do that. All the brothers were speaking and he said he's going to speak on his father's behalf. Well, you know, in hindsight, I wish I would have wrote a script or even in beer or something, in fact, but for someone of Uncle Prof's caliber, character, that's not necessary. Honestly, you know, I had the privilege of spending the day, a full day with Uncle Prof, just me, Grandpa, and Uncle Prof, the day before he passed away. And he preached a lot of wisdom, you know? There's, so, so, there's some people in life that you run into who can teach you a lot of lessons without even saying a word. Uncle Prof was one of them. Even when he wasn't speaking, you know, I'm analyzing how he, how he carries himself, how he treats other people. You know, how, how do you wake up every day, you know, your body's hurting. Sometimes you wake up at the hospital alone. What are you thinking about, you know? He had a lot of time to reflect. And whenever you had a chance to just speak with him, he always tried to pass that on. I'm also speaking on behalf of my mother and sister for health reasons they couldn't attend today, but they also pass along the best wishes. And they loved him too, and I loved him too, and I think everyone here loved him too. And just for the impact you've had on my life, Uncle Prof, I want to say thank you. And thank you on behalf of my father. And who said, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, Josie, thank you so much for, for this speech. It makes me feel confident that uh, our future is bright. We've got very bright young men coming up. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, and I'd like to thank the nurses for the wonderful job you do every day, not only for prof, but nurses. The nursing profession, I think, is is so human, and thank you. My sister is a nurse, and thank you, nurses, for coming and even giving a speech. Thank you to all our prof's friends that talked here today, relatives. Uh, prof, when you when prof first came, as you had, I'd say the first ten years, <coughs> he he lived mostly with me and uh, mom. Me, Prof, Mom, rest in peace, Mom. And uh, at that time, um, you know, it, it went a long time before he got sick. So we were even thinking, oh, maybe America is good for Prof. Hmm? He's, he hasn't had an incident for a long time. That's why you're hearing that uh, <clears throat> he was even working. He got a job. He was working. He bought a car. He used to drive uh, himself. And the last, uh, the last 10 years or so, he's been staying with Jan and Mother too also stayed with them. And uh, the incidences of him going to the hospital kind of became more frequent. And uh, you know, he started having more health complications. But as you heard, you know, he never talked anything about how bad he was feeling. In fact, the morning <clears throat> of the day that he passed, I'd gone to Yang's house to see Emma and Dad before they went to Texas, Dallas. And I missed you guys. You guys had left already. But Yang told me that, oh, Prof was already awake. You know, so we went in to talk with him. As usual, Prof was in very good spirits. So we were just talking and, uh, you know, he seemed to just, on that particular morning, he started remembering um, that time when he came to the U.S. <laughs> he talked about, uh, you guys heard from his friend Mato Martin from Texas. He talked about Mato. Talked about uh, Mato and Melody. 
<laughs> I talked about it. Just, it was just kind of thinking back, you know, to when we stayed in Richfield, when we were in Bloomington. So it was just kind of, you know, you know, talking, uh, you know, good memories. You know, and as everyone said, you know, he never ever mentioned, you know, his, his illness or anything. You know, when you talk to him, it's just a normal conversation. He was very entertaining, so it's hard that he's gone, but at the same time, we thank God for allowing him to be with us for, for so long, despite uh, suffering from sickle cell. They, I think they, everything everybody has said, I would say the same thing. But I think I can just sum it up by saying that uh, to me, Prof was, he was just a good human being. And I appreciate him for that. Thank you. Thank you to all of Prof's, Prof's siblings um, and Josie for standing in for Uncle George. Mm -hmm. We're going to have Maureen Hepburn come and do a poem. Mm -hmm. I know all of you are wondering who is Maureen Hepburn. Mm -hmm. that's, that's Abby Nyangweso. Now this is Maureen Hepburn. So mm -hmm. Abby, come and do your poem. And then I'm going to ask the brothers to come and stand after Maureen does her poem. Please come and stand with our father when he speaks. So Maureen is going to do the poem and then we'll have Mze come after that. Um, thank you, Lillian. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Maureen, uh, also known as Abby, and I am Prof's follower. I'm actually the second last one in the family. Uh, we grew up together with Prof. Uh, we were in the same school uh, in Langata West. And we had the similar friends like uh, Ray and uh, Jim Eric and others in Langata. Um, we played Sheik, we played Monopoly. We went to Kani together with our friends. And um, Prof always tried chatting up my friends up. You know, we'd go out and he's like, oh, who's that chick? <laughs> and actually, he ended up dating one of my friends uh, back in high school. Um, from memories, as everyone has said, uh, he battled and endured the de debilitating sickle cell disease. Sickle, dis sickle cell disease causes um, red blood cells to stick together in small blood vessels blocking the flow and preventing oxygen reaching the tissues. And Prof always had, you know, from memory back, even when I was eight or nine, he had bouts of crisis. And we always used to say, oh, what, what can I do? You know, he's in, I'm going to school, but he's either in hospital in Nairobi West, working at Emma and George, uh, father used to take him there. You know, and we're like, oh, what can we do? What can I do just to make him, you know, just be like normal, like the rest of us. Um, however, saying that, uh, I've got admiration for Prof. He had a sense of humor. His resilience and his attitude of not giving up. As most of us have said, Emma and Oti, Yang, you know, you'd give up. I'm a nurse, I work in the UK. Uh, and, you know, people sometimes are like, oh God, you know, I can't take it anymore. You know, but Prof just fought and fought and fought. And he always had hope. I spoke to him on the Wednesday, sorry, on the Friday and the Saturday uh, for about an hour and, you know, a long time we spoke. But he was always having hope. He said, oh God, I feel so much better now. And he was so happy. On, on the two days I spoke to him, on the Saturday, Friday and Saturday, he was happy. And he was like, oh God, I'm so happy. Made, uh, Emma and uh, Fade are here. And he said, oh, Emma reminds me of Made. He said that and he was so happy. He was in good spirits. Um, I'd like to appreciate the nurses 
I know it's not easy, but we, 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 I just like to appreciate you for the, the care you gave him. You treated him with respect and with dignity. I always called and I, I liaised you know, with some of you on the phone, uh, Yang and myself. We used to communicate all the time when Prof was in hospital. And I'd call the nurses, ask questions, recommend. You know, I think I once recommended our pressure relieving equipment from one of the nurses, Kim. And uh, David said, oh, Abby, that's one of my favorite nurses. He said that. So I, I, I owe it to you to say thank you for looking after my brother. Um, so I'll just go into the poem and say, so go and run free with the angels. Dance around the golden clouds, for the Lord has chosen you to be with him. And we should feel nothing but proud in our hearts. You hold a special place. Although the Lord has taken you from us, and our pain our lifetime will last, your memory will never escape us. But make us glad for the time we did have together. Your face will always be hidden deep inside our hearts. Each precious moment you gave us shall never, ever depart. So go and run free with the angels as they sing tenderly. And please be sure to tell them to take good care of you for me. You went away suddenly. We did not say goodbye. But a brother, we can never be parted. Precious memories never die. You're in a better place. And if love only could have saved you, you would not have gone. Rest with the angels. We will meet again. Thank you, God, for giving us you. And love always from myself. My children are not here with my husband. But we spoke all the time. They, Sasha and Alex told Prof how they loved him. <laughs> And Alex used to do videos of him dancing, you know, and that would make Prof laugh. You know, so from London, from the UK, from my family to you, we love you and rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. We're going to have some music play as uh, Mze comes, and I will ask Oti. Young Bob, please come and stand with Mze. After Mze speaks, we are going to then invite Pastor Mokoa to come and give us the homily. So. Okay. We will, we will sing a song. Can we sing? Can we have a song to sing? Because uh, we're going to give Father some time to get up here. So maybe play us some music.
please. We have a fantastic choir. And that was actually a Lua song. So Lua songs can be played in modern instruments, too. So thank you very much, Jamisiani. Now we are going to invite um, Zay to come to the podium. And I'm going to ask the brothers, Prof's brothers, Prof's brothers, to come and stand with Mze as he speaks. Mze Karibu. my voice when Margaret died last year. I've seen a doctor and I think God is taking care of me. Thank you very much. Prof uh, was my child number seven. We loved him. He was a good boy. Prof was under pain for 14 years. Whenever he was, he, he was in crisis, he, he would say, Baba, I have some pain in my stomach. I have some pain in my legs. Sometimes the whole body. Thank you very much for coming to support us. Thank you. I must also mention Pastor Larry reclining from New Church. The year Mama Margaret came in America, Pastor Larry oh, put a lot of effort to come to our house, to Daniel Tom's house, coming to pick us up for Bible study. It continued for a long time, even until now. Thank you. Please convey our Sympathy, our love to the rest of your church members. Rick Lanning, thank you. Uh, Prof. David, when he died last Sunday, the other Sunday, He had just been discharged from the hospital, I think previous day, on Saturday. As, as my children have just told young, I said, 
He was happy that day, talking, 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 and laughing. So on that day, we were flying out to Texas. So in the morning, that Sunday, he talked to me and said, Baba, are you going to Texas? I said, yes. But don't be long. Don't be, too, don't be there for a long time. Come back soon. And I said, Brother, I will not stay long in, uh, in Texas. We will be back soon. So we went by air to Dallas. After leaving the airport, we went to our daughter's house. And my daughter Emma called back, called here to call Young to say we have arrived safely in Texas. So the the answer we got back from the, on the phone that Prof fell down and is dead. The same day. So we had to make arrangements of coming back to Minnesota. Thank you. I thank you because it is less than a year when Margaret died. It is less than one year. So this time when we came, from Kenya. I came to discuss with my children how we can conduct the first anniversary. We were going to organize anniversary for Margaret in America. So that anniversary for Margaret will be now another another flight to Kenya with a dead son. So God knows why it happened like that. I don't know. We don't know in our house. But we leave everything to God. So I thank you. I don't have much to say. A lot has been said about Prof. Man is to thank you for the support, for coming to pray together with us. And uh, I have no, no words because I'm feeling funny in my mouth, in my throat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.
So I am going to ask, um, thank you, thank you so much, Mze. Thank you very, very much. Um, I don't think I have anything else I can say beyond that. Um, what you know shared with me the details of that day and how everything happened and um, I know it was a difficult day. So thank you for the words about Prof, um, the eulogy and all the comments that have been made I think everybody gets a sense of um, the son, the brother, the um, friend that uh, Prof was. I'm going to ask the choir to sing Waymaker as we welcome Pastor Mukoa to the podium. So the song is actually in our program. So let's, let's sing that song, and then I will confer with Pastor Mkho, and then we will have him come up. So I think we've all been sitting, there's uh, bottles of water that were being passed around. So if you need some water, we have water in the house now. Uh, we've been sitting for a long time, so I'm going to ask all of us to rise, and let's entertain the, the choir as they, as they sing this song. Joshfat Polisana and the entire the Nyangweso. It is true we were here hardly one year ago for to see our mama Margaret to give her a send off. It was a, ma a painful moment that time of course uh, it is more painful now when even before the the wound is healed another one has come Pauline Sana may the good God comfort you with the heavenly comfort I've known your family now this uh, very close to you. We spent some time on Thursday, and uh, I saw saw you. As much as you may try to have the countenance on your face, but within, you are broken-hearted. And I thank God for those verses that were read here. It's only God who can who can comfort you. And Paul says that he will only comfort you with a heavenly comfort. And I'm here to represent him this evening. Before we hear what God has for us, allow me to thank the Akia leadership because I've witnessed and I've seen your tenacity, your, your leadership, Sister Lillian and Alvin and the rest. It's my prayer that you keep on supporting this organization because in this time and age, you have to belong somewhere. You have to belong to your very own. Because whether you like it or not, even eventualities happens, accident happens, things happen. 
and you need people to come and be with you. And I thank you all for coming here this evening. Thank you very much. It is not a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. I normally quote the book of the wise man Solomon who said it's good to go to the house of mourning than the house of feasting. In other words, it's, there's a blessing. There's a blessing to be with the families of those who are mourning. Because we are all together in this life's journey. And you don't know who's next. So it's, I thank you all for coming. Even those who are watching via Facebook and uh, YouTube, I see there's a big number. Thank you very much. Thank you, and may God bless you. May God bless you. Thank you for the music ministry. Always seen you, just being with this, whenever there's a bereavement. I thank you for your ministry. Thank you very much. You know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, by the way, for those who don't know me, my name is Eric Makua. I'm a pastor of two churches, Faith Church International in Brooklyn Park, and of course Ramsey, under the denomination of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I have, uh, I have preached for more than 25 years. I used to preach, I used to have a big church in Nairobi before I moved to the U.S at the seat hall. And uh, I was young. I was given a big church, and I started doing funeral services. Just to go to Rangata Cemetery. And uh, buried many, many, many people. But the older I get, I come to realize it is uh, very heavy, very personal. I also question. And if you don't ask questions, then you are not normal. I ask questions. And also, when I study the word of God. And this has made me realize the philosophers was, were once upon a time theologians. And they had a lot of questions. But when they did not find <clears throat> answers to their questions, they ended up being philosophers. Like St. Augustine, St. Aquinas and the rest. Because why do God allow suffering to happen to good people? Where is God when innocent children suffer? When people fall sick? Where is this God when we need him at most? Why couldn't he have healed Prof? Because uh, we've been praying for him for a long time. Why did he allow him to suffer all this time and let him go? Why do we have these problems around the world? And of course, uh, Christianity is a big, you know, religion of the world where we believe in the word of God. I tempt sometimes to question those things and I find myself wandering away from the Bible. But uh, whenever I have these problems, these questions, the only anchor that I have, I go back to the Sora Scriptura, the word of God. And uh, when I had prophet rested, I went back to the book of Genesis. And I was asking myself, why? <laughs> Do we have death? And in my understanding, I want to give you things that I've found. There are four points. Then we'll have a word of prayer that has all encouraged me because I need to be encouraged in order to encourage you. One thing I've found that God is not the cause of death. Man is. How do I know that? Because the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse, 20, 2 verse 16 and 17 says, And the Lord God commanded men, you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. 
For when you eat of it, you will surely die. And man disobeyed God. Man ate. And as a result, death came. So that's not God. And Paul made it clear by saying, as a result of partaking the fruit, in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, sin entered the world through one man, Adam. And death through sin. And in this way, death came to all men because we all sin. We men are the cause. If we obeyed God, we could not be experiencing death. So that's one understanding. I say, okay, God, I forgive you on that. That's one understanding that has laid dawned on me, Brother Kibwato. This means when we lose a loved one, we cannot blame God for that loss. The death of a loved one should not lead us away from God, but it should cause us to draw nearer to him. The death of prof should not draw us away from God, but it should draw us more closer to God to give us comfort. Is the only source of comfort. The second understanding I said I have for that I've come to get is that we must hold on to this that death is an enemy. That the thing that we should always remind ourselves that death is an enemy. We are all surrounded with death, I meaning with enemies. We have enemies everywhere. Some, that's why us maybe from Kenya, I believe most of us from there, we give, we fence our homes and up there we put electric fence. We drive the bulletproof cars from the attack of the enemy. Even in this country, normally say that uh, America has enemy. Yeah, of course we've said for a long time the Al-Shabaab of course, the Al Qaeda, the, the Afghanistan was going on, surrounded with enemies. You have an enemy. But the biggest enemy is death. For you to be safe and secure, the enemy has to be destroyed. That's what the Bible tells me. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25 to 26, he says, For he must reign until he has put all his enemy under his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is dead. Praise God. Because one day, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. A time will come. Time will come. When the enemy will be destroyed. And that enemy is death. Day is coming when death will be no more. When pain will be no more. Suffering, sickness, sickle cell anemia will be a thing of the past. A time is coming. That's why Paul said, when he looked back and said, Oh, death. Where is your power? Oh, hates, where is your sting? For the last enemy to be destroyed is death. That day is coming. That day is coming. That is a clear understanding that has dawned on me. At that point, before the dead is destroyed, death is inevitable. I'm talking about at that point. I'm about to finish, ladies and gentlemen. Death is inevitable. So long as we live, now and here. So long as we are on the other side of heaven, death is inevitable. Death is not a respecter of persons, or position, or age, or education. Whether you're big or small, boys and girls, rich and poor, white and black, death is impartial. As much as it is in partial, dead is little. We shall die someday if Christ does not come soon. We shall. 
we shall die if Christ does not come soon. And so long as we are in this world, I want to bring to your attention, to bring to your attention that we, death cannot be escaped. You cannot. You cannot. So, back in your mind, you need to always remind yourself with this fact. Sometimes we put it under the carpet. That's why I keep on reminding my parishioners that for you to enjoy life, you need to start to start thinking about death. And it will give you the eclipse of understanding that you need to do things that are important and those things that are not important. You will not do everything in this world. Hello? You will not. If you have to love your father, show him love. If you want to forgive, forgive. Hmm? Don't go over sleepless night. You are just troubled with the cares of this world. That they both messed you up. Even if they want to fire you, let them fire you, you will get another job next day. Hallelujah. Even if you don't have money, yes, you don't have today, tomorrow you will get it. So why are you troubling yourself? Life is too short. That's why I keep on saying, reminding ourselves. For this short time, God has given us live quality life. Love your family. Love your friend. Take care of yourself. Self-care. Give yourself a treat. Embrace. Cherish what you have. You know, sometimes, this is a by the way, you know, sometimes I don't, I don't envy these rich people. These people, rich people, they are troubled, by the way. You know, the, the rich also do what? Cry. Yeah. They are troubled. They are troubled. They are troubled. So, my prayer has been like David of the Bible times. Don't, God, don't give me too much that I may, you know, forget you. And don't give me too little that I may go around begging for bread. Just give me enough to recognize you that you're God. And what we need is food, clothing, and shelter, and good health. Enough. So long as we are in this life, death is real. Told you I'm giving you four points. The last point is, and this is the good news. This is the good news for us all. Death is not the end. Hallelujah. As much as Prof have died, is that is not the end. Hmm. How do I know that? Because Job, the oldest book in the Bible, Job wrote in Job chapter 14, verse 14, if a man dies, shall he live again? That is the question. All the days of my service, I would wait till my renewal should come. In other words, Job knew that yes, even if somebody dies, there is hope beyond the grave. He said that. And he said in chapter 19, I know my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed yet in my flesh, I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. That he said, I know even if this body, this flesh is destroyed, I know one day, one day, one day, I will see my God. I will see with my naked eyes. I will see him face to face beyond the starry skies. Job knew very well. And that's why Jesus Christ, when he came, I'm about to finish, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ, when he came here on earth, in John chapter 11, you know the story of Lazarus. He said to, Laz to the disciples, yes, even Mary and mother, that your brother is asleep. He defined death as asleep. That's the first time there was a game change. Because in the Hebrew times, they used the word sheol. If you study the Old Testament, 
they knew that when somebody has died, there's no exit door on the other side. But Christ came to give us a new definition of death, that there's an exit door. You get here, there's an exit door on the other side. There's an exit door here. There's an exit door. We got there, then we can get here, out here, through this door. And that's why Jesus said, death is asleep. After this, we'll go, and when time comes, we'll go to bed. And you are rest assured that in the morning, you'll do what? Wake up. That's what Christ told us. And I say that, let's use that word. That prof is doing what? Sleeping. Hmm. Is that good news? Yes. Mama Margaret slept. And that's why he says that we need to encourage one another with these words. That uh, those who have slept will wake up when, when we shall hear the trumpet of God. By the way, Jesus, he said, I am going. And because he said, I am going, he said also, I will do what? Come back. He's coming back. And that's why Paul said, listen to this. This, is, I believe, is my, my last verse. Listen, he says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Listen, I tell you a mystery. Something that you've never known, that's what a mystery is all about. We will not all sleep, but we'll all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. Praise God. Amen. That is the good news. That is the gospel. Gospel means good news. And what is the good news? That those who have gone before us, that prof who has slept, one day we shall see him. Not, no, 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 uh, not in a utopia way or uh, in spiritualism. Uh -uh. He says that we shall see him face to face. We shall touch him. We shall feel him. We shall talk to him. Those who've gone before us, we shall talk to them. Our dear ones, he says that we will talk to Mama Margaret. Mom, uh -huh, we missed you, but thank God you're back. Joseph Mama, uh -huh, you left this, uh, you left me behind, but I, I'm glad, I'm glad them took up And you, uh, Prof will say, yes, I rested, I have enjoyed my sleep. And Jesus Christ himself says, I will usher us all into the glorious kingdom where he says there will be no death, there will be no pain, there is no separation, the things of the past will be all be over. Hallelujah. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I'm here to give you the good news and to encourage you. Don't give up. We easily give up. Musikufe Moyo in in, that, in Swahili, it says, don't give up. Musikofe Moya, that's in Swahili. Don't give up. God will be with you. He will walk with you. He will encourage you until we reach the heaven show in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I will give, the closing prayer will be given at the end. Let's have a song, and then what else? You lead us in the Thank you. Please give Pastor Moko a better round of applause. He is always standing with our community and giving us all that good word. As Pastor Moko mentioned, First Lady Sister Damaris Moko is going to give the closing prayer. But before we do that, we're going to go with the program as is from this time on. We're going to have Nyagendia Choral. Are you ready? Um, they will give us a song. And then after that, we'll have the chairman of the funeral committee, Ken Malo, will come and give a vote of thanks, including he will also let us know about where the reception is going to be held after uh, this memorial service. He'll provide the details for that. And then we will have the, the closing prayer and then a song. So, Nyagendia Coral, please um, go ahead.
Ken Malo. Um, I'm here today as a friend of the family um, and actually part of the family. I have known the Nyanguesos ever since I got here. That's over 20 years ago, or more than that. And so I'm not just a friend, but part of the family. Uh, I'm also here in my capacity as the uh, chairperson for the organizing committee to assist the family with uh, uh, sending Prof back home for a decent burial. So my role here today is just to give a vote of thanks to all those that have stood with us from the beginning uh, till today and will still be with us in this journey all the way to the end. So I thank all of you that uh, managed to squeeze your time to be with us here today to celebrate Prof's life. And uh, first of all, uh, I have a couple of uh, uh, people I will call out here really. Uh, but just before we, got start, we get started, I just want to thank God for having all of us here today and giving us this opportunity to be together. And we are celebrating Prof's life, and uh, he has had a wonderful, despite the challenges, many years that he spent with us. So we thank God for that, and we appreciate that. I'd like to call out uh, Pastor Mokua and uh, First Lady Damaris for leading us on this service. We thank you for your time, and we appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, 
our committee members, uh, it, it's, uh, I, I probably won't be able to uh, call out every person. Uh, here in Minnesota, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a, uh, we have a committee of friends that uh, have come together, not only to offer their moral uh, support, but also financially and even materially, people that have made sure that things are going on. You know, we have Estes home. Uh, we have uh, people traveling. We have uh, things to pay for. And we have a lot of people that volunteer to assist with that. I'm not going to call every one of them. It's a lot of people. But I thank you for that, and we appreciate Um as you know, uh, the Kenyan community, it, you know, there's uh, people here, there's people in Texas, there's people in the United Kingdom, there's people all over the world. So all these communities, are, are, you know, we, we, we acknowledge and we appreciate what you have done. Uh, not to forget that back at home uh, in Kenya, they have uh, people working to make sure that things are going on back home, planning, there's people volunteering their time, giving their financial support. So we acknowledge and appreciate them, and we thank them. Um, Esther's funeral home has been a friend now in the community. And uh, for those of you who may not know, uh, it wasn't long ago that I also had to go through a similar situation when my mom passed away here. And uh, so we are very thankful for Estes. Uh, they have worked with us. They have been good to us. And we acknowledge and appreciate uh, what you have done for us. Thank you. This Bedford Funeral Home, again, this is based out of Texas. They are going to be helping us with the second leg of the arrangement. And so we acknowledge and appreciate them. Uh, the Nyangweso family uh, uh, have worked hard. Uh, I know we've worked closely with O.T., Young, Bob, uh, making sure that things are running and, and planning for the future. And thank you so much for all that. Um, I know it's very difficult to uh, <laughs> not uh, forget, but if I forget, please, it's not out of negligence. It's just that we can't call out. Uh, we don't have time for everything. And and last but not least, uh, Lillian Otieno for just leading us here and making sure everything is running uh, as expected. So we thank you all. Uh, and again, let me just call out the financial support we've, we, we've received from friends and, and even some people that are just strangers that have been touched by what happened. And, and so we have done really well there. We acknowledge that, and we appreciate uh, all that financial support that we've gotten, uh, both here in Minnesota, in Texas, in the United Kingdom, and in Kenya. Thank you. Um, before I close, <clears throat> I just want to remind you all that uh, after this uh, celebration here, we are going to have a little reception uh, over at Otieno's home. This is in Brooklyn Park. And so uh, you are invited after the service here to come over and have a little reception as we celebrate uh, Prof's life. And I'll give the address if you want to jot it down, but we'll be here. We can still verbally give it to you. It's uh, 5937 Emerson Avenue North, and that's in Brooklyn Center. And uh, that is really after we are done here, that's where we are going to be heading. So you're invited to join us. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Ken. Um, Ken has been very, very instrumental and helpful. And like he said, um, like a family member to the Nyangwesos. Um, we're getting to the end of our program, and I'm going to call First Lady, Sister Damaris Mukoa, to come and do the closing prayer. So Sister Damaris, please welcome. 
Sister Damaris McCoy is a very prolific speaker. If you, uh, a very prolific uh, speaker. If you've listened to her, I have been blessed by her sermons. Pastor McCoy, I love your sermons, but I think I love First Lady sermons more. I'm a little bit biased. It's always uplifting. So welcome, First Lady. Good evening, everybody. Lillian, don't put me into trouble. I need to. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for sparing your precious moments and time to come and be with this family. This is a really, really, really hard moment. And they will only remember you now when they are very low. So this is very meaningful to them. And thank you. God bless you. Ken and your family, you're very dear to me. And uh, we are still praying for you. This is truly hard for you too. Um, I am going to ask all of us to please remember this family in your prayers. Just keep talking to God on behalf of them as they go through this. It's not an easy moment. I'm reminded of a song that we all sing and we take it very lightly, but it's a song that I pray it encourages the Nyangweso family. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will still take care of you. He will take care of you. He doesn't just pick it, he means it. No matter what may be the test, he will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. Through every day, oh, all the way, he will take care of you. God will take care of you. He has promised to take care of you. He has promised to hold you very dearly. So please know that he is really, really going to take care of you. When Jesus says that I will take care of you, he doesn't say it the way Damarisa will say it or Pastor Mokwa will say it or my friend Lillian Bost will say it. He says it because he knows the sting of death. For he is the only one who has tasted death and experienced the sting of death and knows what it hurt, how it hurts to separate from family and loved ones. So when he says, I will take care of you, he really means it. I feel very sad for you, family, but God loves you. This is how our dear one's life had to come to an end. Before he was formed in mom's womb, his life had already been planned out. How do I know it? It's written in the Bible. Each one of us, we're just living the life that the Lord has already set it up for us. I'm trying to take time waiting for dad so that he can come, we pray together. So spare with me, I'm not trying to overdo my husband. I'm just, Eric, please. I'm just trying to buy time. God loves this family and he loves you deeply. When tragedy strikes, don't ask why. And don't ask how. Just say, God, thank you. Because the Lord is trying to, to, to get your attention and draw you closer to him and say, listen, I need you closer to me. Our dear brother, our sweet brother, as, as the sisters, the older sisters were talking it, I'm sorry, it, it, I was trying to, to put myself in your shoes and I'm like, how are those girls able to hold it together? It is hard, it is painful, but the Lord is trying to call you for an attention. He's saying, mommy, 
I need you. I love you. I know you love Prof more, but I love you more. Uh, please come close to me. Accept that call. Because the Lord wants you. I always say this. When we separate, when we are separated with our loved ones through death, it is a moment for us to actually check our ways and make them aright. They have rested. Theirs is all done, awaiting for the trumpet of the Lord. And so when the Lord comes and, and those who have slept ahead of us will be called and their graves will be bursting open, I will say this, and I said it to the family. When Prof slept, the person he was with is the person he will wake up asking for. So please make sure you're there. Because he'll be the, the first person, because he, he's asleep right now. I love this beautiful writer. She says, when Jesus Christ was on earth here for 12 years as he was walking on earth, he tried to explain to the mother and tell her mom, I am doing my father's business. And for three days, I am going to be separated with you. And then I will see you again. Mom could not understand that. It was painful for Mary to see the only son being crucified on the cross for what he never did. Those three days were eternity for Mary. But she was told, for those three days, we will be separated. It's going to be very painful. But hey, I will wake up again, and we will see each other again. And sure indeed, after three days, Jesus woke up. And the hope I'm living with the family this evening is our sweet brother is just resting for a short time. And he's going to wake up again because we have been promised by the Lord that he's going to wake up again. So let's hold that dearly and cling to it and have it as a hope. When Jesus comes, because he's coming very soon, we will meet our loved ones. I'm going to request the Nyangweso family to please come up here. Let us hold our hands together and pray together and just ask the Lord to, to, to be with you at this time. Please come. And I will plead with my husband to come because he's an ordained minister, to come and lay his hands on you and uh, any ordained elder too. Please come. God will take care of you through every day, all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care. I will humbly ask as we pray, please pray for this family too quietly. Let us humble ourselves and bow down for a word of prayer. Eternal Heavenly Father, you who inhabits heaven, we invoke your presence this moment. We call upon you, dear Father, not because we know how, but because you have told us to call upon you in times of pain, in times of distress, in times of heartache. You have said, call me and I will hear you. And so Father, we call upon your holy name this moment. Jehovah God, please, here we are calling on you. Our creator, our sustainer, our redeemer, you who knew us, you who formed us in our mother's wombs, who laid out our lives. We plead for forgiveness and ask that Father God, may you please Lord blot out any iniquity within us and in us. 
Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Lord, I present this family unto you, the Nyangweso family. This is a family you love very much, and I know it because you died for this family. They are broken, they are crushed, they are hurting, they are separated with the loved ones. Lord, Father, how I plead for grace and favor and blessing upon this family. <clears throat> Father, hold them. You have promised that when they are crushed, when they are broken, you will hold them very close to you with your righteous right hand. Father God, have your way and do it as you have said. We claim that promise in Jesus' name. Mighty God, give them comfort. You only, you alone knows how to comfort deep. Comfort them. Dad has lost the son. Oh, Heavenly Father, please give him strength. Give him peace. The peace that surpasses human understanding. The pillar of the house, the whole family looks up to him for strength. Oh, Jehovah God, he can't do it by himself. Lord Father, step in and hold him. Mighty God, we thank you so much. We praise you, we adore you, we glorify you so much for the life that David lived and he, as you have chosen for him to sleep as he sleeps we who are left give us a hope to meet him again and as we live and journey in this life may we journey and live a life that is pleasing unto thee and as we are mourning right now, may we not mourn as non-believers, but as believers who are hopeful for your soon return. Now they are setting off to Kenya to go and re and put our brother David to rest and wait for your coming. I am humbly asking you, Father, everyone who is going to handle this body of our brother David, Bless them abundantly. Lord, ordain that craft that's going to carry this body. Ordain the craft that is going to carry this family all the way to Kenya. Go ahead of them. Go with them. May you surround these crafts with your blood, Jehovah God. May your holy angels surround it. And Lord Father, take them safely. And as they journey from Nairobi all the way to Kisomo, Almighty oh God, may you accord them with the traveling mercies that are up from above. The family back home that is busy taking care of situations and stuff, as they are meeting, may you be the chairperson. And may all plans fall into place according to your will. We only plan as human beings, but Father God, do you make it happen. Have your way, because your way is always perfect. Father, embrace this family with warmth, with love. Thank you so much for everyone who has come to be with this family. Thank you so much, Lord, for all who have dipped in their pockets to support them financially. Thank you so much for all who have spent their time to pray with them, to pray for them. Thank you so much for the community, for the leadership of Sister Lilian Otieno. Almighty God, the organization, Alvin, and the rest, mighty God, bless them and bless them. May they not lack, favor them with good help. Now, Father, this family, as it sets home, protect them from COVID-19. And mighty Father, as they finish the last send-off of our brother, may you bring them back safely, take them to their respective places where they stay, and may we be careful to just praise you and thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you for hearing our prayers. 
Thank you for accepting to listen to these prayers and answering them because we have faith and we believe that you have heard and you've answered. For it is in the dear name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen. And amen. Thank you. just going to take uh, a few pictures and then they will move out um, please just hang tight uh, if you need the address for the reception Alvin has those details as well as Ken Malo who was here so we're going to take just a few pictures because we are over time um, six o'clock and then we will move for more pictures uh, on the atrium so thank you all for being here and just hang inside. Again, thank you, Pastor Mkor and First Lady, Sister Damaris Mkor. We really appreciate you all, and we hope that we will still continue to engage with you. Did we take a picture with Pastor Mkor?
minutes to allow Estes to move on with the next phase of this program. So I'm kindly asking that in two, three minutes we start making our way out of the sanctuary. Thank you. They need a, they need to, yeah, yes. I'm going to kindly ask everyone that we move to the atrium. Let's move to the atrium. Uh, I'm going to invite Estes to uh, come and uh, move on with the, with the next phase. Thank you so much. End the stream. Thank you, everyone. Let's 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 move over to the atrium and give uh, Estes the opportunity to move on with the next um, phase. Thank you. <laughs> Close it. That one and the other on the other side. My boss sent. Oh, this one. Yeah. Oh, T. And this one, yeah, and this one, this is the other one. Oh, yeah, can we show? Let me show a bit. Yeah, okay, good. Just one. There's so many hats that are left here. I need to ask, I need to ask someone to bring those up. Thank you. 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 Could you, t could you help take this? Yeah. Those are going to go to a tea's house. Thank you. I think we can take pictures outside now. Yeah. 